In this Learn Electrics video, we will look at the two-way lighting circuit tests that we must make. The video is about why we do the tests a certain way. We've often been asked why there is a certain order to the testing and why we do those particular tests. And a frequent question is about which wires, which conductors are actually being tested at any one time. Two-way lighting tests are easy to do we just need to be methodical. This is a basic two-way lighting circuit with a three-plate ceiling rose. We've laid it out this way so that it is easier to follow which parts of the circuit are actually under test at any one time. For most domestic installations, the conductors will be installed as part of a grey sheathed cable. The feed cable or loop cable, as it is sometimes called, is often 1.5 square millimeter twin and earth. The switch cables will be the same, but some electricians will use one millimeter twin and earth cable here, and then the three core plus earth strapper cable for the two way switching. Notice the brown sleeving on the conductors that might become energized to 230 volts at certain times. It's important to follow the standard convention for terminal configuration at the ceiling rows. Anyone following behind you will then know which wire is which. The ceiling rows has three brass blocks, one with two terminal holes and two with three holes. The block of two is always the switched line. In normal operation it will sometimes be at 230 volts and sometimes at zero volts depending on the switch positions, lights on or lights off. The middle block of three is always the live loop block. This block is permanently energized regardless of the switch settings. And the outside block of three is the neutral block. Finally, there is an earth or CPC terminal. Our first test should be the low ohms resistance tests. This will prove the continuity of the circuit conductors, an important first step. For this radial lighting circuit, these tests will give us the R1 plus R2 readings that can be entered onto the test certificate and are also used for determining what ZS should be. These are dead tests, so carry out safe isolation as a first step. All lamps and transformers etc. should be removed from circuit so that we are left with just the wires on their own. Anything left in circuit may give incorrect readings. The three circuit conductors should be removed from the circuit at the consumer unit, that is to say, from the circuit breaker, from the neutral bar and from the earth bar. Now link line and CPC conductors together at the consumer unit. There is nothing more to be done at the consumer unit, all the testing is done at the ceiling rows and the switches. Set your test meter to low ohms resistance. At the ceiling rows, with the switches in the lights on position, measure between the earth terminal and the switch block, the outside block of two. On all these drawings, the wires that are being tested are coloured red to help you to understand just what is being tested. If a wire is not coloured red, it is not part of this particular test. You should have a low ohms reading of just 1 or 2 ohms or so. Any reading above 5 ohms is an incorrect reading. If your meter reads the maximum, 299 ohms or 999 ohms, OL or similar, then this usually indicates that one of the switches are set to lights off. Simply operate just one of the switches and this should now test OK. This reading 1.2 ohms, as shown here, is the R1 plus R2 for this circuit and can be recorded on the test certificate. A polarity check can be carried out at this stage. According to the wiring regulations test sequence, this is carried out later, but as everything is set up for a polarity check, do it now. Simply operate the first switch and test, and the meter should show a maximum reading shown as OL on my meter. Operate the second switch and the meter should display a low ohms reading again. This proves that the line conductor 
is connected to the switches and is operating correctly. Switching polarity is correct. We should prove that the earth or CPC conductor is continuous through the circuit to both switches. We may not need the earth today, but it may be required in the future, so we need to check. Move to the furthest switch and low ohms test between the earth terminal and the common terminal of the switch. A low ohms reading should be returned, showing that the CPC is continuous back to the consumer unit. Sometimes the readings are all wrong. There may be several reasons. Wrong meter settings, probes in the wrong places, or even an incorrectly wired circuit. I find that the easiest way is to test halfway along the circuit using what we call a divide by two test. Halfway is the same as divide by two. We know that the live loop terminal is always live when the circuit is energized. There are no switches between the circuit breaker and the live loop terminal, the middle block of three. Therefore, with the link between the line and CPC at the consumer unit still in place, we can test at the ceiling rows. Live loop to the earth terminal should always give a low ohms reading. Always, regardless of the two-way switch settings. Live loop to earth will always be continuous in a good circuit. If it is continuous, 0 0.41 ohms as shown here, then the first part of the circuit is OK. The problem is with the wiring after it comes into the ceiling rows, or again, how the test meter is set up. If you have an OL or maximum reading, the problem is between the ceiling rows and the consumer unit. This is a good test to remember for lots of electrical problems. If you can find a suitable place to test mid-circuit, you can quickly keep dividing by two and focus on where the problem is. Next is insulation resistance testing. Now we want to know if any of the conductors, line, neutral or earth, are making unwanted contact with each other. This is a dead test, but we will be testing at 500 volts DC, so care is needed. The test current is very low, so you are unlikely to die from it, but you will definitely know if you are touching the part of the circuit or the ends of the probes when you press the test button. When insulation resistance testing, put the CPC wire back into the earth bar. This is good practice. If the line or neutral wires have snagged on any exposed or extraneous metal work that is earthed back to the earth bar, this method will ensure that it is picked up as a fail. Leave the line and neutral in free air. Lamps, etc. should be removed. Ideally, we should test line to earth, line to neutral and neutral to earth as three separate tests. However, where installed equipment cannot be removed from circuit, we may need to link line and neutral together and test between the joined pair and earth. There is provision within the regulations to test at 250 volts DC and you should make yourself familiar with part 6 of the wiring regulations testing and also take a look at our videos on insulation resistance tests. The link that we used for the low ohms tests must be removed. In this drawing the switches have been set so that the lights would be off. Testing between the line conductor and the earth bar you can see that not all the circuit wiring is red. This means that some parts of the wiring have not been tested. The grey wire, the blue conductor used as a switched line and the ceiling rose wires. This is not acceptable. We need to do more to include all the wiring. If we operate any light switch we will effectively put the switches into the lights on position. Now we've included all the wiring in the circuit except the neutral from the consumer unit and the neutral to the light pendant. But we will get to this. A reading of 299 meg ohms is a pass on my meter. Now put the probes onto the line and neutral conductors. Again, with the switches set to the lights off position, the red coloured wires are the ones being tested. With the switches set to lights on, 
all the line and neutral wiring is being tested and hopefully you can see the importance of always doing two IR tests for each wiring combination. By testing once and then operating just one light switch and testing a second time you can be certain that you've included all the circuit conductors for that test. Why do this? Because we don't really know if the lights are set to on or off. Can we be really certain? Well no, we can't. This way, we know that one of the tests has included all the wiring. Now, we should carry out the same test between neutral and earth. But, because neutral is not switched and earth is not switched, the switch settings will make no difference to the readings, so only one test is needed. And here is a quick reminder of the installation resistance test sequence. Line to earth and line to neutral should be tested twice. Neutral to earth only needs one test. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.